So today we're going to cover how to set up the web development environment on a Linux platform. Uh, primarily I'll be uh, showing Ubuntu because uh, that's the platform or the distro of my choice but you are definitely free to use any other distro which you feel like. The steps are going to be more or less similar for uh, different Linux distros and if it's Ubuntu based distro uh, the steps are going to be exactly same. So let's get started. So for web development on Linux or any operating system, the couple of things which we need is obviously first being Git. Now Git is though not a mandatory thing for your development purposes, but I think it kind of helps you push the code to different repositories, uh, public or private repositories, if you want to just save your work there. Uh, if you just want to learn for your own for all your own development or just want to do some tutorials or learnings, uh, Git is kind of an optional thing. But uh, it's good to have it installed and good to learn to use Git. Uh, secondly, uh, use of Node.js, uh, use of Node.js and NPM. Now, Node.js is generally needed for most web development work today because you will be using package managers and package.json for uh, your dependency injections for your dependencies, uh, etc. And NPM is like um, a package manager from which you pull out those external dependencies. You can obviously use Yarn or NPM, but I think I'll be sticking to NPM for my videos. Um, of course, then you have the ID or the editor where you are going to write the actual code. Uh, there are tons of editors available on the market. Uh, different people have different choices here. But for this video, I'll be uh, showing it on Visual Studio Code. Um, and I think uh, generally for day-to-day -day work or for any kind of lightweight projects, uh, VS Code is pretty much okay. But if you are a bit of advanced uh, a programmer or if you're into actual development and you want to you know do a bit more on your programming side I think WebStorm is a very good choice if you're purely into JavaScript based or web based development if you need the whole package with the back end front end and everything you want to write then uh, I think IntelliJ Ultimate is an excellent tool uh, generally most enterprises uh, do provide a license for, uh, for IntelliJ Ultimate and we kind of use them in our corporate environment uh, but for home users I think it's just fine to stick with VS Code if you're not doing too much. Um, lastly, choosing a Git client. There are tons of Git clients in the market for different operating systems. Um, obviously, Windows and Mac uh, have more Git clients. So you have things like Source Tree, the official uh, Git client from GitHub. Uh, those things are only available on you know Mac or Windows. But I think Linux has a fair share of Git clients. Um, and some of them are okay, I would say. Some of them are pretty good uh, like I would say git kraken is one of them which is my favorite and it's there in all three platforms and uh, generally I use that for uh, for my kind of git git related work like git commits or push or anything uh, but uh, this thing is kind of an optional because most IDs today which you use, if you're using like WebStorm or IntelliJ, you do not need a Git client because the entire Git integration is inbuilt there. So you can do pull, push, any kind of, you know, repository differences, uh, branch comparison, everything is possible from within that itself. Uh, so let's see uh, what we want to do. So I'll first open the terminal and I will check if I have Git installed on my PC. So as you see, I do not have any Git installed on my PC. I will check the Node version and I do not have Node as well. So for installing Git, uh, as you see, the instructions are already there. It's pretty straightforward. All you do is like sudo apt install Git and I will just install Git for you. So it will take up a couple of seconds and Git should be installed. Uh, the only catch is after Git has been installed, you need to configure your um, your user ID or I would say your email and your name. So this is what Git will use when you're kind of committing a code. So I think the steps are pretty uh, straightforward, but I will show you how to find that. You can simply do a git configure, uh, simply Google this and I think you will just uh, get uh, this tutorial in Clashion, I think it's pretty great. So here it tells you like what to put. So you can do git config user, user email and you can set your email ID. So here is something like that, right? So what you do is like git config. Uh, so this sets you to the this sets you globally, so irrespective from where you're committing a code, this should work for you. So I will just put up my email ID here. Uh, 
Uh, additionally, you can do uh, the git config of your name as well. So you can do a git config global, use the name, and then you can put up your name. So this will be used when you are committing any code uh, in any repository, you know, GitHub or GitLab or anywhere. So these uh, are the credentials which will be used. Uh, I wouldn't say credentials. These are kind of the references which will be used, the email and the name. So now I'm done with the git. Uh, I can just do a git version and see my latest version of 2.25.1. And uh, now it's time to install uh, Node.js. Now, uh, for Node, I think the very uh, simple step is just do a, a sudo, uh, like a sudo apt install Node.js. But uh, as I explained earlier, I will not be doing that. Instead of that, we'll be using a Node version manager. So what that helps is kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, allows you to downgrade or upgrade your node based on your project requirements. Now, if you're actually working in real projects, you will see like some projects are compatible with certain version of Node.js. And if you kind of upgrade your Node.js, those projects may not compile properly. Uh, so you might need to switch your Node.js version or your environment based on the project you're working on. So uh, you can simply do a node version manager you can just google this uh, just to show you and you will get this link uh, node version manager so all the instructions here are there but i will just uh, uh, show you what to do and exactly so first thing is you uh, use this command this curl command which will install the node.js version for you okay if you do not have curl in your system you can do a sudo apt install curl and then you can simply run the curl command so this will install the node version manager in your system once that is done you have to close and reopen the terminal so i will close the terminal reopen the terminal and then i need to check if the uh, nvm has been installed just check nvm version so as you can see i have a version of nvm installed already and then i can see what uh, versions of node.js are installed so nvm ls dash remote so this will give me the list of every node.js version which nvm provides me now like goes all the way back to v4 and v3 everything and then of course the latest is probably version 17 uh, but i think the latest lts version as shown here is 16.13.1 so i think i recommend you to if you're like doing any kind of web development uh, stick to the latest LTS version because that will have lesser bugs and lesser issues so let's go and install this version so for installing this version what you do is nvm install and just type the version name as is v16.13.1 the latest one just click enter it will take time so it will basically pull in the a node package from the remote repository here kind of unpackage it and then install it so once that is done now you can simply do an npm version and check what is the node version. as you can see node is installed and the compatible npm should also be installed now we are good so now i have git version installed in the system i have node installed i have npm installed the next i need to do is go to the software store um, and search for code which is the VS code uh, the editor of my choice for development you can use other editors as well um, like you have sublime editor which is a great tool it's very lightweight but I think code is somewhere a bit more advanced compared to sublime uh, but sublime test is also fine I kind of use sublime like a scratch pad um, I'll show you why I do that say I open sublime and you can see like I have some file open and says this is a test and even when sublime was closed this remained as is. so I can just put another one I say this is some test to do to, to something and then I can simply close sublime even if I restart my computer and if I just open sublime uh, these notes will be there so it, it's kind of like a scratch pad I can put down anything here it's typically like a sticky note on Windows you can think of you can dump whatever you want here as long as you want because this is a full fledged editor and when you come back and uh, like reopen it the the content is already there so let's install VS code so as I uh, as I showed on uh, the Ubuntu store you will get the code but I will recommend you to go to VS code directly so just type VS code download and here you go to the official uh, website of this from Microsoft and then download the Debian version if you're using uh, Ubuntu based distro 
So we'll take a few seconds to download this. I'm done so we'll just search code now and this should be there so for the first time it will ask you for choosing your color themes or whatever you can obviously choose uh, the one you like let's see solarized oh, this is my favorite and of course you can choose what you want um, here you have the git integration so you can see source control here so you can uh, clone any repository like you can directly connect to github and pull up your repositories so this will open up github you need to authorize visual studio code from here uh, if you continue you need to log in with your github account and then you can see all your projects here and then you can directly commit from here so if you're directly working on github you do not need any third-party tool for git integrations you can directly do within visual studio code now this is just not limited to GitHub, but any kind of versioning tool you're using, it could be GitHub, GitLab, uh, Bitbucket, uh, VS Code uh, will, do, will do the job for you. As long as you connect your repository to VS Code and authorize them properly, you should be able to do any kind of versioning operation from within the VS Code itself. Thanks for watching my videos. This is Arindam signing off from your Tech Inception.